Hey guys, Rob from Georgia here with you, aka VHS82 Apostrophe, with episode number 14 of my Crazy Fives. Um, this one's a special one, man. This is a special, special episode, uh, really near to my heart. Um, it, it really began, um, it began as just me trying to think up, uh, songs and and i think uh songs is they're integrated into film um and i think uh something to the effect of oh those crazy songs that leave their indelible mark um but as as the idea evolved and continued to just grow or expand i guess evolve uh suddenly started to take on a different form sort of it wasn't just me picking out my favorite songs it became uh, a, a, a top five, um, so to speak, still going chronological order in terms of, um, in terms of, um, placement. Um, but this, this, this crazy fives is really reflective of my family. Um, and I'll just say this, um, Every every song placement um, that is uh, very near and dear uh, for whatever reason uh, to us and my wife and my daughter and my three boys. Um, it's funny. Every one is 1984 back. It would just, it's got to say something, right? Um, I found that interesting. So, anyways, let's let's, let's get into it. So this is this is a crazy five special edition sort of uh pre-christmas i guess maybe celebratory crazy five in a way um in a way uh so this is a family thing okay and so this is kind of a little glimpse into my how my family is impacted by music in film uh i always have my outside looking in and so i think we all agreed as you see up here um x-men days of future past which uh you know, phases one, two, and three of the Marvels and everything else, um, I have really gotten just, I've had my fill of comic book movies. But this one, this one has been revisited a couple times of late. And this movie really, really continues to grow on me. Um, but as my outside looking in, the song in question is Jim Croce's um, Time in a Bottle from 1972. Um... Uh, debuted on the album uh, I love this title You Don't Mess Around with Jim um, so Jim Croce the scene in particular is Quicksilver uh, and that is in that room where he kind of slows time down as he makes his way around uh, disarming uh, and rearranging everything in uh, in its appropriate needed place um, and the, the use of time in a bottle and just that scene I, I think that might, I personally think that is the best placement of a song in a comic. And I know that's, 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 there's some good ones. I, and there's another one coming up in my list. There are some good ones. Um, but there is just something about that scene and how it works and the song. It's all, it is perfect. Uh, so outside looking in, Crazy Fives. Uh, X Men: Days of Future, Days of Future Past. Jim Croce from 1972, Time in a Bottle. Quicksilver does his little thing around the room. Uh, it is, uh, it is a phenomenal moment. Uh, phenomenal moment. Now, number five. Um, let's get into the stuff you don't know what's coming. Uh, compliments of my oldest son Sam, who is our Thursday reviewer, Body Bags. Um, his song. Um, comes from 1984 um debuted it on an album entitled sleep and safety some of you might know it now uh from a group 45 grave uh and of course it is used uh quite awesomely in dan o'bannon's return of the living dead party time uh what a phenomenal choice by my son, Sam. 
Um, this is his pick, and uh, just because it's 1984, it sits at number five. We do things chronologically in these lists. I don't want to get into the nitpicking of what should be first or second or third. It's just how they roll, man. Uh, 1984, th this is phenomenal, man. What a phenomenal use of a song uh, in, in terms of uh, just the cast of characters we have in the midst of this uh, um, quite incredible, uh, over-the-top zombie uh, fun man uh so 45 grave man from 1984 uh sleeping sleeping safety party time number four uh compliments of my wife now i'll never forget uh first time i i saw this film with her um i i hated the placement of the song because uh, I, I try, I, I strive to be a student of history and I just, I, I, when I see historical pieces unfold to a very contemporary song, it just, it just gets me the wrong way. But uh, I see it a little differently now, uh, maybe a lot differently now. I see it a lot different. It doesn't, it's not as, uh, it's not as um, awkward to me now when I watch it. Um, but this is Compliments My Wife. Uh, the song uh, uh, debuted on the album News of the World 1977 because we're talking Queen We Will Rock You of course the movie is A Knight's Tale uh, Heath Ledger of course uh, missed that guy and everything that guy could have done um, by Brian Hegelin uh, Knight's Tale in uh, 01 was that? yeah 2001 uh yeah, it is that jousting scene, I think it is, uh, that they utilize at uh, Queen Song Will Rock You. And uh, so uh, I, I, tried to con I tried to get her to go with um, Brown Eyed Girl from Sleeping with the Enemy. Because uh, I think that's just used absolutely beautifully in that movie. Um, but I don't know, this is for her personally. This is the movie, she hears that song, man, and she just thinks of, uh, she thinks of this. Like Sam, he, he hears Party Time, thinks of Return of the Living Dad. And of course, I, I would too, naturally, right? Um, so Sam, Sam's got uh, Party Time from 84, My Wife, We Will Rock You from 77, Queen. Next one just happens, number three happens to be me. Um, this was tough. I could have just gone the easy way uh, because I, it is absolutely true. When I hear Free Bird on the radio, immediately my mind just goes straight to uh the end of uh the devil's rejects uh and whose mind winning if you're familiar with the movie um rob zombie is uh is, is just a genius at uh song placement in his films whatever you may think of him as uh, i think whatever i'm a fan and that's all that matters here on my channel um uh, but that's not what i didn't go there i could have because i think it's one of the most ingenious moves ever in the history of cinema um I didn't go there. I did go with Rob Zombie, though. And it's uh, it's sort of a dual placement. Um, two songs, really, that just... They go to, in different ways, they go to my youth. Um, and it, it, it's not the most positive thing in the world, maybe. I don't know. It is, in a way. Um, anytime music can remind us of our youth, e even, you know, with the good and the bad, the bad and the good, or whatever... Um, the song uh, debuted in 1974, but even earlier, 1960, by the Everly Brothers, um, which was strange. I thought this was an original piece, but apparently that's not. Uh, it debuted for this group who covered it uh, on their uh, album, Hair of the Dog, uh, again, 74. And of course, we're talking Nazareth. We are talking... Uh, Rob Zombie's Halloween remake. Yes, there's my movie ticket. I saw this in the theater um, and was absolutely blown away about it. I'll say it again. I was blown away about it. I'm continually blown away by this film. Um, I could really care less about the cynics, the critics, and everyone else. I just don't care. I, I don't care. It, it doesn't bother me. Uh, you can hate all you want. I don't care. Uh, but uh, love hurts, man. You know, I think... For, for a lot of us who, who, as well as our childhood may or may not have been, this song relates, man. We, we A lot of us can relate to this song in terms of our childhood. Um, and to see poor, to see Michael sitting on the, on the curb there as this song 
kicks in and and knowing that his frame of mind or where it is at uh is quite frightening and uh and and zombie knows how to comment socially he knows how to comment utilizing the lyrics of songs that he places in his film uh he does this all the stinking time um if you just sit there and read the lyrics uh you get it and it just it really deepens what he's trying to do in terms of the scope of his film narrative um what he's trying to say uh but but the other one in here too is and it's only a really short quick snippet but it is um it's Bing Crosby and his uh his deck the halls uh you see um Loomis um is uh walking outside of the uh sanitarium um and he's he, and there's snow on the ground and so you kind of got that that Christmas seed it's Christmas time but I don't know if it's it, it's the song it's the snow it's it's the uh his attire it's the uh color palette of the scene um it, it suddenly catapults me as a young as a kid back into the 70s in Christmas as I remember Christmas is and and that may really sound weird because it's uh it's Halloween it's Rob Zombie and it's uh you know the tone being set as he goes into the and what transpires as he's in there immediately I mean the the song deck the halls is contrasted against um Michael's frustration of being locked locked up and as a boy you know you see the you see it come out of him and um and it just it catapults me it, it it just catapults me uh but that's what music in 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 film is supposed to do whether it does for you or not it's neither here or there it does for me and so for number three uh it's sort of a combination effect of uh bing crosby and nazareth uh, really does a mind job sort of on me when i'm when i'm watching this movie so anyways i probably spoke a lot longer than i should have on that segment but um Number two. Now, number two comes uh, compliments of my littles, um, James and Max. Uh, the song uh, is from 1970. Um, and, uh, well, I'm going to tell you what album, but uh, you're going to figure it out real quick. Led Zeppelin III. Uh, it is, of course, the Immigrant's song. And uh, I don't have the solo release of this film. I just have it in my box my phase one two three marvel box set that i got amazon uk uh a few years ago which uh i i i i more than got my money back on this purchase um definitely but thor ragnarok um uh from 17 um the use of the zeppelin song in terms of um uh, Thor's character and his arc of uh, sort of being knocked down and then finding his place up again towards the end uh, is just a, a phenomenal moment in film. It is it is fun. It is a lot of fun. I almost kind of wish the entire score of the, the the entire music soundtrack of the movie would have been just Led Zeppelin, sort of like Queen did for you know a number of their films. Um, Flash Gordon or Highlander or whatever. Uh, but anyways, um, and so I can't, I can't disagree with that man on that, man. It is, uh, it is a phenomenal moment in comic book film, um, that works, uh, extremely well. And of course that is, uh, uh, with T, uh, Waititi or Taiki, uh, Taikia Waititi, however you say his name exactly, man. The movie's phenomenal. That Thor film is maybe the best one in the entire series, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, and the use of that song is is just works per perfectly for Thor's character as it is evolving in that film. Um, and then so finally, that just leaves my daughter. And she just so happens, my eldest, my oldest child, uh, comes in at number one. Uh, but that's only because there's her favorite song is 1942. Uh, so by default, she is in number one spot. And that is um, Bing Crosby's name again. Uh, but the song is written by uh, Irving Berlin uh, for the 1942 film Holiday. Is it uh, Holiday Inn? Is it? I thought it was for White Christmas. That 
might be my big goof because I have White Christmas here to show, but I actually think it's Holiday Inn. Um, so as I round out my top five, let me, I'm just gonna pause and- Yep, so that was my terrible mistake. I can't believe that I was gonna show this when in fact my daughter, Becca's pick was uh, the use of uh, White Christmas was of course from Holiday Inn. Thankfully, I just had this on the shelf. Um, so uh, yeah, Irving Berlin's Holiday Inn, uh, Bing Crosby, Fred Astaire. Um, uh, this was her, this was her go-to. Uh, took me by surprise uh, only because um, I, I was, I didn't realize this would be her go-to, um, but it is. Uh, this film is extremely, uh, must be pretty near and dear to her heart. And I probably ought to know that, but um, uh, she, she has been out of the house for, for a bit now. So uh, um, the use of White Christmas, uh, as sung by Bing Crosby, written by Irving Berlin, specifically for Holiday Inn. Uh, in fact, it did win uh, an Academy Award for Best Original Song, too. Uh, so there you go. So, I mean, I had my notes in order. They were the way I just, for whatever reason, grabbed White Christmas, right? White Christmas off the shelf. Not sure exactly why I mentally did that. So, uh, so anyway, still... Uh, reflective of uh, the family in general. These are the songs uh, that when we hear on the radio and uh, our minds suddenly are catapulted to uh, maybe just not that specific scene in that specific movie is already laid out to you. Uh, perhaps uh, moments in our childhood, uh, years having long been spent. Um, and they still, do, they still do that. I'll hear, uh, and of course, it's, I mean, I was born in 70, so there are plenty of songs out here, you know, like say, the Eagles, one of these nights, I suddenly remember uh, being on a beach on Lake Ontario and uh, the sand dunes and the water and uh, sand getting into your potato chip. How do you remember this stuff? I don't know, it's weird. Um, but we're, we're wired in a weird way, I think, like that. Music uh, plays a pretty important role in terms of how we view some of this stuff. So, so there you go. Um, from my daughter, Holiday Inn, uh, at number one in White Christmas. Uh, my Littles, uh, The Immigrant Song by uh, the Zeppelin for Thor Ragnarok. Um, uh, sort of a double here, uh, Nazareth, uh, Love Hurts with uh, Bing Crosby, Deck the Halls, Rob Zombie's Halloween. Uh, my Wife's We Will Rock You by Queen for A Knight's Tale um, in 77, the song. Um, and then my uh, my oldest son, Sam, Party Time uh, by 45 Grave, as used for the film, Return of the Living Dead. Uh, and then, of course, we all agreed that Time in a Bottle by Jim Croce for uh, X-Men uh, Days of Future Past was just absolutely brilliantly used. Um, and so there you go. Another edition of Crazy Fives. Uh, sorry about the little mental lapse there, uh, but we got her done. We got her done. And so... Uh, Thanks uh, to my family for contributing to this. And um, it is really kind of too bad that we couldn't have all been in the video together and kind of stuff. But uh, she's not here and it just makes it top. So anyways, uh, hope you enjoyed that one. And uh, I don't know, it seems like maybe then my next Crazy Fives may be uh, my go-to threes. We'll see. As always, we end these things off with Go Bills. This is not a dream. Not a dream. We might be useful.